At CES this January, EVGA showed us their SC17 gaming laptop for the first time, and now we're ready with our review. Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Schrott with PC Perspective, and we are here today to take a look at EVGA's first entry into the gaming notebook market. That's right, the company you know of for power supplies and video cards is now making uh, a fairly massive, fairly impressive gaming notebook. This is the SC17. We first saw it unveiled at CES in January. They showed uh, a non-G-Sync, a G-Sync model. This is the non-G-Sync version. It's the first one that will be released. We don't really know exactly when the G-Sync model uh, will be sent out. It's a sizable laptop. It's a 17.3 inch screen. It's fairly heavy at almost nine pounds. I think it's like eight pounds, 11 ounces or so, not including the power brick. It is a gaming notebook. It is meant for gamers. It has impressive specifications and features to go along with it. Let's talk about the specs. So uh, it's powered by an Intel Core i7 6820HK processor. The HK meaning it's high performance, K meaning it's unlocked. So this is a fully unlocked processor, which is actually super cool for your ability to uh, run at higher clock speeds than I think the default 2.7 to 3.6 gigahertz uh, on there. It has a GeForce GTX 980M mobility graphics in there. Uh, not the full GTX 980, but the 980M, still a pretty impressive mobile GPU, uh, but that helps them keep kind of the, uh, the slim profile. It's got 32 gigs of memory. Uh, the screen is a 4K screen. It's IPS built by Sharp. Uh, it does have a kind of a matte coating on it <clears throat> that will help reduce some of the glare uh, from lights, although obviously if you if you move it around here in the studio lights, you're going to see some glare. It's an impressive looking screen, 17.3 inches, uh, but you're going to run into the Windows scaling stuff, right? So Windows 10 does scaling way better than other versions of Windows, but you're still running to every, in once in a while, an application, even Steam, um, sometimes has problem uh, has problems with scaling. Uh, other specifications, uh, 256 gig NVMe PCI SSD, uh, one terabyte 7200 RPM uh, hard drive in there, uh, and basically anything you need for a high performance system, this thing is going to have. If we walk around the outside and kind of look at connectivity and, and features in that regard, uh, you've got two USB 3.0 ports and one USB 3.1 type C connection. You have gigabit ethernet, full size HDMI, but it is HDMI 1.4. You have two mini display port connections as well, but only one of them supports G-Sync. What I'll say about that is I think two USB ports is probably not enough for a gaming notebook, even though you do have the USB 3.1 Type-C. Uh, some of the other gaming notebooks that we see have as many as six USB 3.0 ports on them, and that just helps for mouse, keyboard, headset, speakers, anything else that you want to hook up through USB, charging devices, those types of things. So a little bit disappointed to see uh, that minimal amount of, uh, of USB ports. No optical drive in here at all. Uh, power, uh, the power brick is very, it's uniquely designed, it's very kind of wide and flat, easier to put into a bag, I think. Um, but otherwise, a very good design. The keyboard has a lot of key travel in it. Uh, it's backlit, white backlit, not RGB or anything like that. I actually liked typing uh, a majority of the review for this laptop that's on PCPro.com on this keyboard. It worked really well. The trackpad's a little bit, uh, it's sizable, but I think on a laptop this size it could be bigger. It's a little squishy. It's not my favorite kind of implementation of it. Uh, no physical buttons, kind of the, the bottom third of the trackpad or so acts as your uh, left and right click buttons in that way. Uh, 802.11 AC, obviously, for your wireless, and uh, you've got your integrated webcam and audio and speakers and everything. The speakers are actually up here. They sound pretty good, and there is a, a dedicated subwoofer on the bottom as well. Pretty good for uh, as far as laptop speakers go, but they are still laptop speakers. So let's talk about uh, performance and overclocking. Out of the box, a GTX 980M has close to the performance level of a retail, like a desktop GTX 970, a little bit below that. Uh, the screen is 4K. Obviously, gaming at 4K is not really what you want to do with that type of GPU horsepower. So EVGA recommends gaming at 1080p, and I think that makes the most sense because it's a 4 to 1 ratio uh, on your screen, so it will upscale fairly easily that way. Uh, and that way, uh, when we did that, we were able to play uh, GTA 5 at very high settings and uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider at very high settings, both between 55 and 60 frames per second or so at 1080p. And it looked really, really good on the screen. You can still connect an external display if you want to do that, um, but the, in, the, the, the integrated display here is actually really, really nice. So gaming performance-wise, you're going to have a lot of horsepower for this. There is one GPU faster than that. Obviously, you went for the full 980, uh, but the 980M is still pretty impressive. CPU side, 
The 6820K is a quad-core, hyper-threaded part, lots of compute power there. If you're going to do video editing or rendering or, you, or anything else like that productivity-wise, you're going to have more than enough CPU horsepower to really get the job done. Now, in terms of overclocking, EVGA went the extra mile here, integrating a full UEFI BIOS implementation into this. So if you want to go into the BIOS, you hit delete during startup, you go into it, it's going to look very familiar to you, it's going to have all your overclocking options, uh, all of the settings that you're used to seeing on an EVGA motherboard, uh, not stuff that you're used to seeing on how it would be integrated onto a laptop in any other uh, scenario, more or less. So that's pretty impressive. Maybe even more impressive is the software that you get in Windows. It's EVGA's Precision X mobile variant, which actually has CPU and GPU overclocking all in one tool. You can actually do all that manually if you want. My favorite part was the fact that they just had, they know all the components in here. They know your processor, they know your GPU. So they had a way to easily hit one button and kind of get a default overclock out of it. Took the CPU uh, with all threads running in our Pavre kind of standard multi-threaded CPU benchmark, went from 3.2 to 3.8 gigahertz. So a significant increase there. We got about 20% uh, performance improvement on that. And then on the GPU, it integrated a uh, plus 76 uh, GPU clock speed offset and a plus 200 GPU memory clock speed offset, getting us about 7 to 8% performance improvements uh, in our games and 3D Mark scores in that regard as well. Um, <clears throat> when you are overclocked, there's going to be more noise coming out of this. Uh, the top part along here is where your heat, uh, hot air is kind of dissipated for a lot of it. This will get hot to the touch during gaming sessions, gaming sessions, uh, but your wrist rests remain fairly cool as well. So that's kind of, it, it's, it's a trade-off you get, right? All gaming notebooks are going to be louder. They're going to be hotter. This one is uh, just over an inch thick. So that's part of the, the, the trade-off you get in terms of noise levels and, and heat dissipation. And it's one of the reasons why they went with the 980M instead of the 980, because they wanted to maintain that very thick, thin profile uh, for the design. Uh, Cost-wise, this is a $2,699 MSRP, shipping uh, I think in mid-April, so pre-orders are, are up on their website right now. $2,699 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for anything, uh, particularly a notebook. It does fall in line with some of the competitive options from MSI. The GT72S, for example, is $2,599. Uh, it's a thicker, uh, thicker machine, similar specifications, um, but it has a 1080p screen instead of a 4K. Uh, and like I said, it's almost, you know, eight tenths of an inch thicker than this display. And MSI also has a, a thinner option as well that actually is limited to the 970M instead of the 980M <clears throat> in terms of your actual gaming performance there. So it is expensive, but it's kind of in the realm of where it should be. And gamers that are looking for a high-performance mobile option, I think we'll, we'll find that this is uh, a competitive in, in the pricing scheme. Overall, I really like what EVGA has done with the SC17. Uh, the combination of performance and features, uh, the keyboard, the screen, the matte finish on it, the kind of unibody, all metal design is really attractive. You get a little bit of a fingerprinting issue on it. Um, little touches like the U, uh, overclocking and the UEFI implementation. There's even a BIOS reset switch, like a little pinhole BIOS reset button above the power button. Uh, the EVGA logo on the back can be turned on and off independently of the backlight of the screen, which is kind of nice uh, in case you're maybe blinding your roommate with the light behind you or something like that at the library. Uh, assuming that you guys, you go to the library, I guess. Uh, there's just a lot of interesting, neat things that they did that, you know, opens up with one finger, right? They, they took the time uh, to put some unique finishes and touches on, uh, on this device. Like I said, shipping in April. We have the full review up on PCPro.com. If you want to see more pictures and benchmarks and all the data uh, that we have for you there. Uh, but I think EVGA should be pretty proud of their first entry into the gaming notebook market. And we'll be curious what they have coming up next. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.